Aurora is back, secured entrepreneurs. Miss Aurora told you that she was going to come back and show you how to complete this application for a self-employed 401k with Fidelity. So we're going to get into that in this video, okay? And if you have not joined us over on the 3 a.m. shenanigans channel, I don't know what you're waiting for, okay? We just got into how it is you're going to receive information or an instruction via a dream or a vision. And we did part four of the secret language of money. It's getting real juicy in the fourth quarter on the 3 a.m. shenanigans channel, okay? So step on over there and join the conversation conversation. All right. So let's get into this application. And Mr. Roy is going to show you how it is that the secured entrepreneurs who do desire to have a self-employed 401k, how you would really maneuver it so that you can still operate the secured entrepreneur way. Okay. Let's do it. For those of you who do not know who I am, I am Miss Aurora Day, and this is the secured entrepreneur movement. <music> Right now, secured entrepreneurs, here we are on fidelity.com. And Miss Aurora has already brought us to the page to begin to apply to open up an account for a self employed 401k. Okay. They are very clear self employed individuals, owner only businesses, and partnerships can save more for retirement through a 401k plan designed especially for you. Now, remember, I told you in the video we did before this that the self-employed 401k is for self-employed individuals, owner-only businesses, okay? So as we get into the application, you're going to see more uh, about what that's, what that's about there, okay? With Fidelity, you have no account fees and no minimums to open an account. You'll get exceptional service as well as guidance from our team. Okay. So the plan details, key things to know, open your plan and establish account, contribute to your account. All right, here we go with the things to know, because one of the things that Miss Aurora tells all of these secured entrepreneurs, please read everything. You know, we have a lot of people that they, they don't like to read. They don't like it. But when it comes to these type of things, you know, any type of legal agreements, things that you are really getting yourself into a contractual agreement that could put you in some detrimental bondage, you need to read the, the complete contract. Okay. And right now, Mr. Roar is going to ask that you like this video, share the video, subscribe to the channel because we're coming with it in this fourth quarter. Okay. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Okay. Who is eligible? Self-employed individuals with no employees and owner-only businesses. The owner's spouse may participate in the plan if they are a compensated employee of the business. Again, self-employed individuals with no employees and owner-only businesses. And then they tell you that the owner's spouse, okay? So owner-only, the owner's spouse may participate in the plan if they are a compensated employee of the business. So be very clear about that. Tax benefits, tax deferred growth, tax deductible contributions, and pre-tax deferral contributions. And then you can click this link to learn more about the tax advantages of self-employed 401ks, okay? Who contributes? Funded by salary deferrals, and employer contributions. All right, here's the contribution amounts that we talked about in the last video. Employee salary deferral contributions. In 2024, the maximum was $23,000. In 2023, the maximum was $22,500. Now, if you're an employee age 50 plus, catch up. In 2024, you had the $7,500. And then in 2023, of course, there was already the seven, the seven thousand five hundred dollars. Okay, employer profit sharing contribution 2024, as I told you in the uh, previous video, would be sixty nine thousand dollars, and that's up from 2023, which was sixty six thousand dollars. Okay, let's talk about the withdrawals. 
Participants are eligible for withdrawals once a triggering event has been reached. Triggering events include reaching age 59 and a half. Okay, we know that. Disability and more. And many of you won't like what the more is, okay? For a full list of triggering events, see the one-time withdrawal. Defined contribution retirement plan form PDF. Okay, I may show that to you. I may show that to you because there's some people that will have an interest in that, okay? A 10% early withdrawal penalty may apply if you are under 50, age 59 and a half and taking a withdrawal. Required minimum distributions start at age 73. When they say 10% uh, early withdrawal penalty may apply if you are under age 59 and a half. Well, we know that if you are under the age 59 and a half and you don't have any of the triggering events like disability and the other things that they have listed, then yes, you're going to pay a 10% early withdrawal penalty. Uh, 10% early. Yes, you are. Okay. We, you know, we know that. Investment options. A wide range of mutual funds, stocks, bonds, ETFs, and more. ETF exchange traded funds. Okay. Fees. There is no opening cost closing cost or annual fee for Fidelity Self-Employed 401k, zero commission for online U.S. stock ETF and options trades, okay? But you're going to need to read the fine print on that. Administrative responsibilities and IRS filing is required when you terminate your plan and in some cases on an annual basis. Please see maintaining your plan for more information. You would click that link and you would get that PDF. Okay, or go to that page. I think this one is this one is a page. It's not the PDF, it's a page. And you need to read that. Okay. Establishment deadlines. The deadline to open a new plan is generally the tax filing deadline, including extensions of the sponsoring business. Note. For partnerships and corporations that establish their plan after the business's year end, only the employer profit sharing contributions are permitted for the first year. Sole proprietors must open their plan by their tax filing deadline, no extension, to make both profit sharing and salary deferral contributions in the first year. Okay, so get clear on that. All right, how to make contributions. You can do it online. You can do it by phone through mobile check deposit or by transfer or EFT on Fidelity. And then you can click the link to learn more. That's going to take you to a play page. Okay. Second thing, open your plan and establish account. To fully establish your plan, you'll also need to complete the self-employed 401k account application, adoption agreement, and trust agreement. Now, we know that none of these secured entrepreneurs are surprised by the trust agreement. <laughs> okay. Please keep copies for your records along with the defined contributions retirement basic plan document number four. Online plan establishment is available if you are establishing a new plan, are the plan administrator and plan participant, are a U.S. citizen, are naming your spouse, as your primary beneficiary if you are married all right now if you're going to do this online you would open you would click the link open a self-employed 401k now mr ward's going to take you to the documents if you are not eligible for online establishment you may and i personally prefer to fill all this stuff out okay review download and save or print for your records the following document Define contribution retirement basic plan document number four. I'm going to show that to you. It's a PDF. Review, download, complete return to Fidelity and keep a copy for your records. The following forms. The self-employed 401k adopting agreement. The trust agreement. And of course, the self-employed 401k account application for yourself and each participating owner, including the business owner's spouse, if applicable. Once you've established your self-employed 401k plan and any new accounts, the next step is to contribute to your 401k. Okay, here we go. Contribute to your account. You can use the Small Business Retirement Plan Contribution Calculator to calculate your annual contributions. You want to click that link. 
You may contribute to your self-employed 401k through the following methods. Contribute now via EFT on Fidelity.com. Or form it, and you 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 have to have uh you you have to already have had the account opened to do this. That's why there's a lock here. So so you're not going to be able to click that and go right to it. You're gonna be, you're gonna click that, and uh, you would go to the place where you have to log in with your login and password. Okay, or from a Fidelity non-retirement account in the name of the plan administrator and used for the business. Now that's getting into uh, Fidelity's uh, cash accounts that I'm going to, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to do a video on that. I'm going to do a video on that. So, so sit tight. Deposit checks on Fidelity's mobile app using mobile check deposit. And if you click that, you go straight to a page. Send a contribution via an external bill pay service to set up salary deferral elections. Now, this is if you have a payroll, you may be using a payroll company like ADP, all right? You can use the sample 401k salary reduction agreement form. And when you click there, you're gonna get a PDF. Fill it out yourself and have each participating owner, including the business owner's spouse, if applicable, fill it out as well. Keep this form for your records and do not forward to Fidelity. To roll over other plan assets. If you already have a retirement savings plan for your business, you may be able to roll over or transfer existing plan assets to a self-employed 401k, consult with your tax advisor or benefits consultant prior to making a change to your retirement plan. Assets from the following plans may be eligible to be rolled over into a self-employed 401k. Profit sharing money purchase and 401k plans. SEP, IRAs, and SAR, SEPs. Simple IRA accounts after two years of simple participation. 403B and government 457B plans, traditional IRAs. Call a retirement specialist, they're giving you their number, and say, retirement representative to get help with a rollover into a Fidelity self-employed 401k. Here are the contribution deadlines. The deadline for self-employed individuals and owner-only businesses to make both the company profit sharing and employee salary deferral is the business's tax filing deadline, including extensions. For corporations and partnerships, in the year the plan is established, if it is established after the business's year in, only profit sharing contributions are allowed. In subsequent years, both company profit sharing and employee salary deferrals are permitted. For the year salary deferrals are to commence, generally participants including self-employed individuals and spouses of owners if they are participating employees must make a written salary deferral election by the business's year end. Okay, so this is the page that you would come to on Fidelity's website to open a self-employed 401k. Now, Mr. Roy is going to take you to the documents that are named here that you're going to need to include with your application. All right, now this is the retirement plan trust agreement. Secured entrepreneurs, this is a 30 page agreement. Okay. And I would take a look at, and I'm talking really read all of these articles that you're about to get into in the 30 pages. Okay. It's imperative that you do this because this is something that when you sign the account application, you are agreeing that you agree with this and you understand this, you're agreeing to this. Okay. So there's a part in here that you really need to pay attention to. There are two letters at the end of this retirement plan trust agreement from the Department of the Treasury Internal Revenue Service. Dear applicant, in our opinion, the form of the plan identified above is acceptable for use by employers for the benefit of their employees under Internal Revenue Service Code Section 401. We considered the changes in qualification requirements in the 2017 cumulative list of notice 2017, 37, 2017, 29 Internal Revenue Bulletin, IRB 89. Our opinion relates only to the acceptability of the form of the plan under the IRC. 
Internal Revenue Code. We did not consider the effect of other federal or local statutes. That's important for you to know. You must provide the following to each employer who adopts this plan, a copy of this letter, a copy of the approved plan, copies of any subsequent amendments, including their dates of adoption, direct contact information, including address and telephone number of the plan provider. They go on. Our opinion on the acceptability of the plan's form is a determination as to the qualification of the plan as adopted by a particular employer only under the circumstances and to the extent described in Revenue Procedure 2017-41-2017-29 IRB 92. The employer who adopts this plan can generally rely on this letter to the extent described in Rev Proc 2017-41. Thus, employee plans determinations except as provided in Section 12 of Rev Proc 2024 2020-01 IRB 148 as, a, as updated annually will not issue a determination letter to an employer who adopts this plan. Review Rev Proc 2020-4 to determine the eligibility of an adopting employer and the items needed to submit a determination letter application. The employer must also follow the terms of the plan in operation. An employer who adopts this plan may not rely on this letter if the coverage and contributions or benefits under the employer's plan are more favorable for highly compensated employees. Now, there's a section in this agreement for highly compensated employees. So you will understand what that means when you read that section as defined by the Internal Revenue Service Code Section 414Q. All right, now here's the 401k adoption agreement that you'll need to sign as well. This one is 10 pages, okay? The Defined Contribution Retirement Plan, Self-Employed 401k Adoption Agreement Instructions. Complete the Profit Sharing 401k Plan Adoption Agreement number 001 to adopt or amend the Defined Contribution Retirement Self-Employed 401k Plan. This is a pre-approved plan for use with the Defined Contribution Retirement Plan Basic Plan Document number four. Okay, so you'll have to give the plan information. You have you need to read all of this plan information into the legal name of the plan. For a sole proprietor with no business name, you can use your name as the name of the plan. For example, the John Smith self-employed 401k plan. You know, here in the Secured Entrepreneur Movement, we would never suggest that. For an amendment of a previously adopted plan, fill in the existing name of the plan. So now we're going to, we're going to get in this and get onto this in the application. You have a three-digit plan number. Okay, uh, let me come on down. Provide the required information for your company into the company's employer tax identification number. Do not enter your social security number. So they're telling you. To obtain an EIN for your plan, you can file IRS Form SS4 or call the IRS directly. They're giving you the number, okay? Because you're not supposed to put your Social Security number on this application. This is for your EIN. They're going over the coverage, the compensation, okay? Employer contributions, normal retirement age, multiple qualified plans, reliance on opinion letter, provider information, and execution page, okay? So that's what all of this is about, all right? Now you're going to be able to answer all of this uh, once we get once we get through the application. And let's go let's go there now. All right, here we are. This is the self-employed 401k account application. All right, let's come on down here. And like I said, you need to read everything. But here's how we're going to complete it: retirement plan information to be completed by employer. Now remember, this is self-employment. This is self-employment type of plan. If this is new, we're going to check establish a new self-employed 401k plan account. Add an account to an existing plan. One of these would be would be your choice if you were adding an account to an existing plan or you want to amend an existing plan. Now, here's the employer's plan information. So the employer name, that's your company name. That's your company name. Okay? The, let me type that here, company name. That's the company name, the plan name. And they're giving you an example, ABC company plan. Okay, so we're gonna say FYP LLC 
401k plan. All right. Employer tax identification number. Okay. Nah, nah. Plan administrator information. This may be the employer or a person designated by the employer. Now, we said the company name was FYP LLC, so that's what we're putting there. The plan administrator address. Now, we all know here in the Secured Entrepreneur Movement that we need a commercial address. You must have a commercial address. So, this is not your home address. This is not your home address. Okay. All right. Employer's signature. By signing below, you acknowledge that the information provided above is true and correct. You understand that a completed applicable fidelity adoption agreement must be submitted with this application if a new fidelity retirement plan is being established or an existing profit sharing plan is being amended to a self-employed plan. Okay. Now you're going to print your name because you are self-employed. This is for self-employed and you're going to sign your name and put the date. Now, if you're attempting to do this online, I don't believe it's going to let you sign and date because I haven't been able to do it in the PDF. Okay. So you might have to print it and sign it because remember, they're wanting you to do this a paper application if you are not able to do the online application, okay? So then we, go, we come down to the participant account information. Now, this is to be completed by the participant and it's saying, into full first and last name as evidenced by a government issued unexpired document. So that could be your driver's license, your passport, or your permanent resident card. So your name, your name your name. Now, tax ID number. Again, we're putting the tax ID number in here and we're checking the box for entity. And unfortunately, they want your date of birth. Mobile phone number and email are required for account security, transactional alerts, and delivery of other communications. So we're going to put your phone number. We're going to put your email. By signing this account application, you agree to conduct business with Fidelity electronically and to the electronic delivery of all account related documents and communications. You consent to Fidelity's use of your email and or mobile number to message, call or text you for this purpose. Messaging data rates apply, frequency may vary. For help with text, reply help. To opt out of text, reply stop. You may also update your contact information at any time through your profile on fidelity.com. Please look for an email to confirm your information and the terms of this consent. All right, uh, residential address. Now this is where you live. This is your legal address used for tax reporting. Your personal address. Your personal address. Now, the mailing address may be a P.O. box, Dropbox, or care of location. Now, if this is the same as legal residential address, just check this box. Here's your citizenship. You have to be a U.S. citizen. They want you to be a U.S. citizen. Do not complete the fields below. Skip to income source if you are a U.S. citizen, right? If you are a foreign citizen, then you'll check this box and you'll, they'll ask if you're a permanent U.S. resident, a non-permanent U.S. resident, or non-resident of the U.S. And they're going to ask you for your government identification number. Okay, income source. Industry regulations require us to ask for this information. Check one and provide information. You're either employed or you're self-employed, and we're checking self-employed. Then they say occupation. Employer, leave blank if self-employed. So we're leaving this entire thing blank because we're self-employed. Associations, many of us are gonna leave associations and affiliations blank because it says a person, as a person associated with a member firm, you are obligated to receive consent from that firm. Fidelity has existing consent agreements with many firms for their employees to maintain accounts with Fidelity and to deliver transactional data. If your firm is not one of them, Fidelity will attempt to contact your firm's compliance office. 
If you are employed by or associated with a broker dealer, stock exchange, exchange member firm, the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, which is FINRA, we know that, a municipal securities dealer or other financial institution, or are the spouse or an immediate family member residing in the same household of someone who meets the aforementioned employment criteria, provide the company's name and address below. Many of us are not gonna fall into this category so we can move past associations and affiliations, all right? But if, if like you're saying, if, you, if you're a spouse or a family member in your household is, is uh, fraternizing with another firm, we need, to, we need their information because uh, we got some agreements out there. We may need to take another route with you or do something for you or something like that because it could be a conflict, conflict of interest or we just need to know. We need to know what's going on here, okay? So if that's you, then you may have to complete it. Most people will not have to complete associations or affiliations, okay? Now let's go on down to initial funding. This is a one-time contribution. Please indicate the method of funding to be used for your account. Check all that apply. Okay, check deposit. Complete this section to make a one-time annual contribution. So if you are going to make a one-time annual contribution, which there are several, there are many people who actually do uh, because they have actually made provisions for this. They have money sitting places. They don't know what to do with it. It's not, it's not uh, accruing any type of interest. They are ready to open up this account so that they have some interest accrued. They, they've got some things going on by the time they reach 59 and a half. And they they really want to wait until they are about 65 because that's when they plan on taking, you know, this this lifetime vacation or what do they call it? Travel. They, they, they're calling it a travel where they're going to be somewhere for maybe half the year or a full year. So they, they've been waiting for this. OK, so. By check payable to National Financial Services, LLC, checks for deposits should be mailed to the address at the end of this application. So if you're going to do a check, you're going to check this box. And then you're going to put the amount in here. So if it's a check, you check this box. You're putting the amount and uh, whatever whatever that is, you'll, you'll put that there. Now, you're not an employee, so forget that. Transfer existing mutual fund only account assets to your new retirement plan account. If you have some existing mutual funds that you want to transfer, you will check this box. Transfer to another financial institution, complete an accompanying fidelity transfer of assets form and return it with this application. So you would check transfer of assets from outside retirement plan of same account type, and then you would put the amount. Now, here's where it gets a little juicy the beneficiaries. Please read this entire thing. Designate beneficiaries to receive payment of the value of the retirement plan account being established with this application following your death. You may name one or more persons, trusts, or entities. Now, this is where the secured entrepreneurs would really come in here. This beneficiary designation applies to this account only and will not impact other Fidelity account beneficiary designations. Additionally, any beneficiary designations you have made on other Fidelity accounts will not apply to this account. However, if you are transferring an existing Fidelity retirement plan account to a retirement plan account, you may elect to apply your existing beneficiary designation to this account by checking the box below. Leaving this section blank will indicate no beneficiary is named by you for this account. And upon your death, you agree to have the payment of the value of this account made to your surviving spouse or if no surviving spouse, your estate. Please, everyone, name a beneficiary, please. If more than one person is named and no share percentages are indicated, payment shall be made in equal shares to your surviving primary beneficiaries. If a percentage is indicated and a primary beneficiary does not survive you, 
the percentage of that beneficiary's designated share shall be divided equally among the surviving primary beneficiary or beneficiaries. If no primary beneficiary survive you, payment will be made to any surviving contingent beneficiaries according to the same rules of succession described above for primary beneficiaries. Point four, do not name yourself as the beneficiary. You should identify who you want to succeed you on this account if assets remain in the account after your death. Now, I, I always get a little chuckle when financial institutions like this, brokerage houses like this, have to tell somebody not to name themselves as a beneficiary. They have to do it because most people really don't understand the language. They really don't. So they don't understand who or what a beneficiary is. They really don't get it. So they have to really spell it out for you. Please do not name yourself, which is why it's, an, it's really important to read this entire application, okay? Copy beneficiaries from another Fidelity Retirement Plan account. Available only if you want to copy the current beneficiary designations from an existing Fidelity Retirement Plan account. Okay, so you can check this box if you want to say designate the same beneficiaries and percentages on this account as are currently designated for and you would put the account information here. Okay, marital status. Please indicate the participant's marital status. Ms. Aurora's going with single. Okay, Ms. Aurora's going with single. If married and you designate a non-spouse beneficiary as your primary beneficiary, have your spouse sign the spousal consent section on the next page in the presence of a notary public. Now, they have to say this because when you are legally married to somebody, your spouse is legally entitled to everything that you have upon your passing. Okay. So if you named a beneficiary that is not your legally, your, your legal spouse, your legal spouse has to sign the consent form in the presence of a notary to state that both of you were in your right mind when you filled out this application and the spouse is okay with you naming somebody to get this money upon your death other than yourself, other than myself, other than the other person. I mean, you know, we have to get that clear <laughs> because fidelity. So they, they are not violators. Okay. They're not violators. So here we go. Secured entrepreneurs, primary beneficiaries. Now, if you are currently operating as a secured entrepreneur, we have already done this application and we have already done this application properly. We can't help that they're saying we're identifying you as self-employed because you are a one person business. You are a non-employee having business. That's okay. Fidelity can say it all they want to. We don't have a problem with that. We just want the retirement account because we know that we operate out of several legal entities that, that are going to assist us in creating tax-free generational wealth, right? So when we come to the primary beneficiaries, if the person is married, most individuals will check trust. Most secured entrepreneurs are going to check trust. If you have to check the married box, your primary beneficiary should be trust. We want the monies upon your death to roll over into an irrevocable trust so that your spouse doesn't have to deal with any type of taxation, any type of taxation that is going to go on here. All right. We don't need, we don't need the, we don't need the issue. So we're just, we're just naming the primary beneficiary as the trust. Okay. So it says for each beneficiary, you list by name, check a beneficiary type and provide all information. 
if you outlive the beneficiary and you want that beneficiary share to go to each of his or her descendants by right of reputation, check her stirpus. And we understand all of that. Okay. So now here we go. For the first section, name. If naming spouse as a beneficiary, do so here. If you're going to name a spouse, you'll check the spouse and you would name the spouse there. Non-spouse, put the name there. Trust. Okay. Other entity. Non-spouse. Trust. Now, the secured entrepreneurs know that when we complete these applications, we're going to name the trust. Okay. FYP trust. All right. Tax ID number for the trust. Okay. Now we're not checking any of these because we know full and well that even if we do have a spouse, we want to name the trust so that everything rolls over into an irrevocable trust so that we don't have to deal with any type of taxes. Just roll that on all over there and we'll take care of it in the trust. Okay. So the secured entrepreneurs understand that. So for this application, Mr. Brewer said single and whatever, whatever is left upon my transitioning, I have a trust for you to go ahead and roll that over into. Okay. So I'm naming FYP trust. I'm giving you the trust tax ID number. No, no mistakes here. And I don't have to put all right now. Okay. And I don't have to put any type of share percentages or nothing like that. Okay. Now contingent beneficiaries. Contingent beneficiaries receive assets only if no primary beneficiary survives you. Do not list any primary beneficiaries here. Okay. So basically we're not going to check a trust and put the trust there a second time. We've already named it because that is primary. Okay. It's not a person. It's not a person. We don't have to, we don't have to get involved with all of that. Okay. But if, if you are married, you would check married, you would list all these things here. Okay. Uh, and maybe for some people who are married and they have children and all that stuff, first of all, you need to have a irrevocable family trust so that you can name the trust. I wouldn't even go through all of this, but that's just what we do here in the secured entrepreneur movement. Okay. Now spousal consent is here again. This is the part where if you have a spouse, and you are not naming the spouse as the primary beneficiary, your spouse has got to sign this in front of a notary public. Okay. And then for part five, we've got participant and plan administrator signatures and dates. You must read all of this because by signing below, you consent to the information, instructions, and provisions set forth in this account application and to the beneficiary beneficiaries you have designated in this application. You understand that payment to the beneficiary or beneficiaries will be made according to the rules of succession described in the beneficiary section of this account application. You need to make sure you understand all of this before you turn this doggone thing in. Because look, look, look at all of this. Then you're going to print your name. Okay. Sign your name, put the date. Okay. And again, you will have to print this out to do that if you're doing the, the paper way, right? Then it's telling you before submitting this application, if you are establishing a new self-employed 401k plan, profit sharing plan or money purchase plan or amending any existing retirement plan, complete and attach the enclosed corresponding adoption agreement. Be sure that you include a transfer of assets form. If transferring funds from another firm, include a check to fund your account. If funding by check, remember to sign this application. Okay. And then it's telling you where to mail everything. Uh, we, we would do an overnight on that check. Okay. And then they have attached the trusted contact authorization form. So here, here we go. Use this form to designate a primary and alternate trusted contact that is 18 years or older for your fidelity account or accounts. Do not use this form for charitable giving accounts or workplace retirement plans, such as a 401k. Type on screen or fill in using capital letters and black ink. 
Miss Aurora won't go there. If you need more room for information or signatures, make a copy of the relevant page, okay? So the account owner, again, your name. This is your information. This is you. However, again, you're putting your tax ID number here, okay? You're not putting your social security number here. Then accounts included. Well, you're not including any account if this is new, if this is new, okay? You're not including any account if this is new, okay? Then your primary trusted contact. A trusted contact must be someone other than the individual listed in section one. Do not provide the account owner's information here. Again, they have to keep telling people because some people really don't understand what they're being told to do. So who do you trust? Uh, in this case, for the secured entrepreneur, it would be the trustee. It, it would be your trustee information. So you would put, oh, I can't type it in here. You can't, you can't type it in here. Uh, you would put your trustee's name, trustee's email, and then it says relationship to owner. Okay. You would put trustee in there and give, give that information. Legal permanent address. This cannot be a PO box, mail drop, or care of. So they want your, they want this, this primary trusted contact. They want that person's res residential address. Mm -hmm. Then an alternate trusted contact, same thing. Then here we go again. You're going to put your name, sign your name. That's the application. So you would complete this application and make sure that the adjoining documents are with this application. So that is how you're going to complete the self-employed 401k application for Fidelity Bank. All right, secured entrepreneurs, there you have it. So if in fact you do have an interest in having a 401k as a part of your retirement portfolio, that is how you're going to complete the application. And once again, please go through everything, all of the documents that Fidelity has, read them with a fine tooth comb before you affix your signature and return these documents to Fidelity and start these accounts. Okay. We want you to be well informed. So you already know you can find Miss Aurora at AuroraDayConsulting.com. And until next time,